All right, hello everyone. My name is Trevor. I go by the Mr. Trails. Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a different type of speedrun today. It's not the typical reforged speedrun like it usually is, but you saw the title already. It's going to be an all hunting ground behemoths flawless speedrun. So what this means is I'm going to have to defeat each behemoth without taking damage. Now, if I were to do a straight run through of this and not take damage to any behemoth at all, then that would be probably, that would probably take a long time. So the rules for this, if I take damage from a particular behemoth, I have to leave that behemoth alone and I can't kill it or I can kill it and it just won't count and then basically I just have to go through the hunting rounds killing each behemoth that is available. I only have to kill each version of each behemoth once but I do have to kill all versions of each behemoth so I have to kill a regular Karabakh, I have to kill a dire Karabakh and then I have to kill a heroic Karabakh for example. And we are not going to be including any event specific behemoths including the Chronovore as it's not even going to be in the hunting grounds in a little while. So the first stop on this challenge is the blaze works where we're going to be taking on bloodshot shroud bloodshot shroud is probably the hardest behemoth to get a flawless kill on but it is also one of the more forgiving ones for this challenge because if i fail that task then i just restart the speed run the main thing i wanted to make sure of was just to kill the clone as fast as possible so i only have to deal with one behemoth attacking me one thing that could have made this portion a little bit faster was to get a level 21 bloodshot shroud instead of a level 23 as my attacks would be dealing slightly more damage against the level 20 you see that I was able to basically keep the clone out of it until I was given an opening to take it out by keeping it on the other side of the arena from me and trying to get Shroud closer to me so I could get it to enrage. And I was fortunate enough to get the situation where where I killed the clone was a good place to stand to get the interrupt from Bloodshot Shroud. Oddly enough, this fight sort of ended up being waited out until I was able to get into the disciplined state. It threw out the Umbral Bomb and as I was going to over to deal with that, it gave me another interrupt opportunity. So I was able to interrupt it and get into the disciplined state. After that interrupted unenraged, so I was given a little bit extra time to get some damage in. And then from here, I basically want to part break it and stagger it until it dies. One of the main things that would make Bloodshot Shroud exceedingly harder to get a flawless kill on is how much HP the thing has, especially since that number is buffed by the Blaze Works itself. So you see that I'm using tonics again when it only has about 35% of its health missing. I saw that I had my Chronovore legendary ability back, so I figured that was going to be better than trying to dodge twice. And after it lands, I'm able to get the stagger on it and whittle its health down. Just before it was able to spawn in another clone, I was able to get a part break, which prevented the clone from spawning. With about 20% HP left, it decided to Aether Charge, and then right after that, it decided to heal. Luckily enough, I think this was one of the only behemoths that was able to heal the entire time. But if you couldn't tell, there basically isn't really a particular trick that is going to get you a flawless kill versus a bloodshot shroud. It is just going to have to happen naturally through good decision making and good dodging. After it heals, the bloodshot shroud enrages and I'm going to be able to get a stagger on it after it tries to throw out an umbral bomb. And then it clapped right after and it was dead. Very easily the most time consuming single fight in this sort of a challenge. After bloodshot shroud is dead, I'm going to head over to Revelation Rock. So the islands that you need to go to for this challenge are Revelation Rock, Restless Sands, Sunderstone, Ulrich's Peak, Frost March, Fortune's Folly, Brightwood, Conundrum Rocks, Cold Runner Key, Snowblind Waste, Undervald Defile, Cape Fury, Hades Reach, Razorcliff Isle, Paradox Breaks, Twilight Sanctuary, and the Blazeworks. You'll notice a lot more of the later hunting grounds are required, whereas a couple of the earlier on hunting grounds aren't required. There are 65 unique behemoths that are going to be required for this challenge. I made a list of behemoths that I would play plan to hunt on a particular hunting grounds, but I also made a side list of which behemoths I could hunt on a different hunting ground if I needed to. On Revelation Rock, our behemoths are Lesser Boreas, Lesser Nasher, Lesser Quillshot, Nasher, and Boreas. In this particular instance, I was able to take out Lesser Quillshot, Lesser Nasher, Lesser Boreas, and Boreas before not getting a Nasher. Under this sort of situation, I would just leave the island to go to a different island for the time being. And obviously one of the main strategies was to use the Malkarian weapon to be able to get to the behemoths faster. But against those higher level behemoths, I was going to want to use the weapon of the opposite element against them. Elemental advantage can give you a 1.2 or even better damage multiplier depending on what level the behemoth is. But another part of the strategy was to basically bounce between the high level and
and low level hunting grounds until I had nothing left to kill and then I would switch to the other side. So after Revelation Rock, I'm gonna head to Twilight Sanctuary. And if you need tips on how to kill lesser behemoths without taking damage, then I'm sorry, then you just kinda have to get good at the video game. So on Twilight Sanctuary, there are three required behemoths, being Shroud, the Scorchstone Hellion Heroic, and the Heroic Tempestborn Stormclaw. It would obviously be a bit of a help to this challenge if you were to fight every behemoth at the lowest level possible, but if I were to run into a behemoth earlier than that, then I wouldn't really care about it. So I was fine with taking out this Thunderdeep Drask, even though it was level 19, when I believe I could get it at level 14 on Cape Fury. For getting a flawless kill on Thunderdeep Drask, the challenge is basically going to be getting that stagger as soon as possible. From there its parts are pretty frail so you can focus them after each break and you should be able to keep it down for the most part. Getting those extra part breaks is obviously made a bit easier when you are higher level than the behemoth as I was level 20 for this whole run. But the challenge here isn't exactly to level up during this, it is just to kill everything without taking damage. And now it is time for the regular Shroud, which even at level 20, in comparison to level 23 Bloodshot Shroud on the Blaze Works, this is a walk in the park. Although there were several instances where it could have actually got me with its Umbro Goop. But for a regular Shroud, since it has so much less HP, the main goal is basically to get a stagger and then to break chain it from there with the beak and the wings. Usually I would be very kamikaze about killing it because I don't really care about getting the flawless kills these days. But since we are doing a flawless kills challenge, I do have to be careful about where I'm stepping. So that ended up making me take a little bit longer than usual to kill this shroud. I didn't even get the stagger before it enraged. But after it enraged, I was able to stagger it pretty easily. And then because I was running a radiant weapon, I didn't even really need all these part break chains to take it out. It just died, like straight up died. But if you need some more time with shroud on the ground, you can stand about five meters in front of it or so while it is enraged to be able to bait the interrupt attack. And other than that, this fight is basically just how good is your part focusing skills, smack only specific parts until you break that part. And the other behemoth that we were able to count for this trip was Heroic Riftstalker. One of my main gripes about Riftstalkers in general is that if you get a stagger on it, its stagger animation is significantly less time than its interrupt animation. It's so much less time that here, after I interrupted it, if I had staggered it, which I actually staggered it on the interrupt by the way, but if I had staggered it while it was on the ground after this, then it would have actually gotten up sooner than if I had just not staggered it at all. But I would have just had to adjust because I have a radiant weapon. It's pretty easy to one shot its parts with a single Titan's Crash. And the fight was made significantly easier anyway because I was in the discipline state when I got the interrupt. So from here, I went to attempt the heroic Stormclaw and the heroic Hellion, which spawned after this Riftstalker. However, for the Stormclaw, I took damage against its sort of hip checky swipe attack forward. And then for the Hellion, Hellion, I took fire damage. So we would have to come back to these guys later, but for the time being, I went to Restless Sands, I believe. The plan for Restless Sands was to take care of Lesser Embermane, Lesser Dresk, and Quillshot. However, the Lesser Embermane didn't spawn after killing the Quillshot, so I just went to Emberthorn Cove to take care of that one. And then after that, I would head to Sunderstone, where I would be able to fight Charog, Skarn, and regular Embermane.
Sunderstone behemoths were not much of a task for me because of the level disparity, being level 20 and them being from, what, level 5 to level 7. The strategy was basically just to wail on them until their parts were broken. I guess I was kind of lucky in getting every single behemoth that I needed to spawn, being Emmermain, Skarn, and Charog, but I believe there was only four behemoths on this island anyway, so the odds of getting this were probably about 33%. After Sunderstone, I head back to Twilight Sanctuary. This trip to Twilight Sanctuary, we got Phalanx at level 18. Again, with being a higher level than the Behemoths, the main challenge is basically getting that stagger, and then maintaining part break focus after that. But I had a shock weapon on for this one, so I could have gotten a shock proc on top of those part breaks as well, but I just really didn't need them too much based on the power multiplier. But yeah, there wasn't really a particular trick for Phalanx, so I just evaded the attacks until I got the stagger, and then I went ham. After this, I believe I go attempt both Hellion and Stormclaw again, but the same sort of situations happened, so I queued up for a different island. Next up was Ulrich's Peak, and the planned behemoths here were Shrike and Drask, with Ragetail Nasher, I believe, being an optional one here. There's definitely no need to overthink these kinds of fights, but I would like to point out that every single one of the behemoths on this island spawned in at level 9, which is the worst possible level to get on this island for, you know, speedrunning purposes. A while ago, one of the devs, Aurelia, joked about giving us partners a pack that would give us worse RNG, and that pretty much can confirms it right here. But no, if anything confirms that, it would be how often I get Phalanx or Struck Charog on round 4 of my Terra Escalations. But yeah, after all Rick's Peak, I head back to Twilight Sanctuary. So back on Twilight Sanctuary, we find the Scorched Stone Hellion, and for this, I decided it would probably be best if I were to just put on Fireproof. While it's obviously possible to kill Heroic Hellion without putting on Fireproof, I just decided, you know what, it would be more, way more consistent if I was to put on Fireproof, so let's do that. And once again, because of the level disparity, these fights are basically just hunting for the staggers. And it took a little bit longer to get that stagger than usual, as I was just being a little cautious. After that, for Pangars and Hellions, it's just basically break their legs, and they are going to be dead. The leg break has a significantly longer animation downtime than the head break, or the arm break, or the tail break. But after this, we head to another island. Here we head back to Revelation Rock real quick to grab the Nasher that I was missing earlier.
And then we're on Twilight Sanctuary for the last time, as this was finally the time we hit the Heroic Stormclaw. Obviously, one of the things that you need to have down when you are trying to kill a Heroic Stormclaw without taking damage is that you need to be able to deflect that Shock Orb. The faster weapons like Strikers, Pike, Repeaters, and Chain Blades are going to have an easier time with that, whereas Axe, Sword, and Hammer are probably going to have a worse time with that. After that, one of the main strategies to keep it down would be to focus its legs, which I unfortunately just got an early break here so it didn't get an extra animation but I was able to get a stagger and take it down further from there. It did enrage though and I decided I would back off a little bit to get an interrupt on it just to be a little more cautious about the situation. But after this we'll be heading on to Razor Cliff Isle. The planned behemoths for Razorcliff Isle were Rezakiri, Heroic Pangar, Heroic Koshai, and Heroic Scrave. But we had Lightbound Koshai and Frostwolf that were here if I was able to take them down. And as you can see, we did get a Lightbound Koshai as I spawned in here, and we did get a Frostwolf later on. For Heroic Pangar, this was a little bit easier as I equipped a Blaze Weapon before coming in here. And then the strategy for Heroic Pangar is pretty simple. It's get the Interrupt, get a Stagger, get the Leg Breaks, and it's pretty much dead. The only thing you really have to look out for here is the Icy Grasp modifier, make sure you're not standing over any ice. For Rezakiri here, I did have to be a little bit extra careful because I started this fight with zero stamina. But my typical strategy for Rezakiri is to use my Discipline Parry when it's in the air and then going to slam down on the ground and hopefully hit its head so that I would deal extra stagger damage so I would be able to get that stagger and then be able to part break chain it from there. Its head and claws have significantly less HP than its tail does. Its tail is a lot easier to hit, but you definitely want to hit the other body parts when you can. The main thing that you have to avoid here is you can't let it even attempt to Aether Charge because if the flashbang animation plays out, you will take one point of damage, and that technically is not a flawless kill. But if you know what you're doing, you can avoid it pretty consistently. From here, the Frostwolf spawned, so we were going to take that out next. After Frostwolf's update, this is basically the same sort of deal as Embermane, though you will want to be able to interrupt it, stagger it, and then part break, chain it all at the same time, instead of whereas on an Embermane, you might be able to get multiple interrupts in. And once again, this fight was made quite a bit easier because I decided to equip the Blaze weapon before coming in here. And at the time of this video, this is the newest behemoth in the game, Lightbound Koshai. While I wouldn't have a very consistent strategy for approaching this fight, it's basically going to be the same as Koshai. You know, you maybe try to bait out that interrupt at the beginning, and then you get the stagger and part breaks from there. It did enrage during the fight though, so I just kind of meandered around until I saw that I was able to get a stagger opening. And then after this fight, we were able to go over to the regular heroic Koshai.
And then we have Heroic Koshai, which is pretty straightforward. You bait out the interrupt by standing a certain distance in front of it and then interrupt it. You will have to jump to be able to hit this interrupt with most attacks. I would say the Discipline Parry is definitely the easiest way to interrupt it these days. And off of this Discipline Parry, I was able to get into the Discipline States to make this fight even easier. And I basically just smack its head and front arms for the part breaks and hope it dies. The last behemoth we need on this island is Heroic Scrave, which we have to leave and come back for. So in the meantime, we head over to Frostmarch as we have a whole batch of behemoths that we can do. On this trip, I believe we get Pangar, Deadeye Quillshot, and Sportstruck Charog. The Deadeye Quillshot was really the only one I had minor doubts about, just because I let it enrage for some reason. But yeah, not much commentary to do about these. Oh yeah, I also got Deep Frost Scarn to spawn here, but, you know, it's the same deal as the other guys. So the only other behemoth that I need need from this island would be Dread Frost Boreas, but I wasn't able to get it on this go around, so we would be heading back here in the future. So I went back to Razor Cliff where we got our heroic scrape. The plan is basically to let it throw the ice and then stand a little bit behind that ice so it will start an interrupt. And then after you get the interrupt, you just go ham. That's basically it and we move on to the next island. So I went back to Frostmarch, but the behemoths I needed weren't there, and then I went to Paradox Breaks, but then I realized I really didn't need to go to Paradox Breaks for anything except for Flameborn Reza, so if Flameborn Reza wasn't there, I was going to leave that, so we ended up in Hades Reach next. The plan for Hades Reach was Hellion, Heroic Karabak, Heroic Embermain, and Flameborn Quillshot, but if Heroic Skarn or Valo popped up, that would save me from doing it on the Paradox Breaks. These fights are pretty simple, but something stupid happened that I will just let you react to.
Ah, so there was a stupid thing. I was trying to hit the one leg, but I ended up going through it and hitting the other leg. I will admit it was a bit of a greedy play to go for that, but I was just like, whatever. After that, I just went over the Ember Main here and took care of that. And that was the last behemoth that counted for this particular instance because I would have to come back for a different Hellion. So after getting abused by a couple of Flameborn Resicuries, I found a Skarn on the Paradox Breaks. Since it was level 16, I didn't have to do anything particularly special on this one. I was just a little extra cautious when avoiding attacks because it got enraged. And after that, we're back on Hades Reach to get rid of the regular Hellion. And I was sure to avoid any stupidity this time. Then we come to Frost March, where I got Dread Frost Boreas as well as Deep Frost Nasher, which was another one that I hadn't done yet. Then we arrive on Fortune's Folly, where the only reason we even have to come here at all is the regular Karabak. But I believe while I'm here, I also take care of Dire Pangar.
And here we are back on the Paradox Breaks where I barely just take damage to this other shield because I got the part break, I had zero stamina, and I'm just slightly too far to the right. But after that I go to Brightwood where we take on Savit, Nezaga, and hopefully Bloodfire Embermane. I don't believe I get it on this trip so I do have to come back for it. But for Savit, the main strategy is to kind of dance very far away from it until you get a part break. And finally, we were able to get Flameborn Reza. This probably took the most amount of attempts. The strategy was basically the same as the regular Reza, but the Elder Shields complicated that, as well as Flameborn Reza has some of the most BS attacks in the game in that it can attack you while it's on the ground because it'll just randomly spawn fireballs when it's enraged, and that can be including when it's on the ground. But after that, and the Bloodfire Embermane, we have five islands remaining. Conundrum Rocks, Cold Runner Key, Snowblind Waste, Undervald Defile, and Cape Fury. Here on Cape Fury, at this point, we just need to take care of Stormclaw, Shadow Touch Corsai, and Heroic Boreas, all of which actually spawn immediately.
So we were able to take out Cape Fury in one sweep. And then we head over to Conundrum Rocks, where we need to fight Valo, Ragetail Nasher, Firebrand Charog, Flameborn Nasher, and Moonreaver Shrike. There were a couple other locations for these, but they just didn't spawn there. And we did have some mishaps on Conundrum Rocks, which I will explain when we get to them. So I basically got greedy on the Rage Tail Nasher and uppercut into its tail slap. But I decided to still kill it in the event it would maybe spawn another one or spawn a Moonreaver Shrike instead. But after that we head to the Firebrand Charog where I have an intense skill issue. So I requeue, get another Rage Tail Nasher, and I suffer another intense skill issue. So after conquering these skill issues, we headed for Cold Runner Key, where the only two behemoths left there were Scrave and Heroic Nasher. Heroic Nasher would actually be the last behemoth of the challenge, because it just wouldn't frickin' spawn on this island. Pretty sure it has like a 50% chance between the two non-guaranteed spawns, but it just wouldn't spawn. And one time it did, and I just took damage from it, so whatever. We'll get to that when we get to that. And then we are on Undervald Devile, where we have Koshai, Shadow Touch Drask, Heroic Charog, Razor Rain Karabak, and Spore Struck Embermane. You basically have to come here for pretty much everything except for Rift Stalker.
One thing you may have noticed is that sometimes I don't teleport like I did in here. And that's basically because I can't guarantee that the behemoth will behave the way I want it to if I do use the teleport in certain situations. Like here, I want to make sure I get the interrupt bait on the co shot. But then there are other times where it's just straight up an accident. After Shadow Touch Drask, I queued up for a couple of different islands to just see if I had anything I needed, and then we found the Sportstruck Embermane on Undervald. After this, the Heroic Nasher on Cold Runner Key, and the Snowblind Waste Behemoths are all that we need. Still didn't find Heroic Nasher, so we are on the Snowblind Waste. Here, we need Heroic Quill Shot, Rifty, Shadow Touch Nezaga, Winter Orange Grave, Heroic Nezaga, and Deep Frost Nasher. Though we took care of Deep Frost Nasher earlier. After those first three, we get back on Cold Runner, and we finally get a Heroic Nasher, but the Discipline didn't work, so I get hit by the second attack. I wasn't recording audio, so you couldn't tell, but I was pretty mauled at this moment. But I kept bouncing between islands until I found something I needed. And I also found this Scrave just not knowing what to do with the life. So at this point, we only needed Heroic Nezaga, Winter Horde Scrave, and Heroic Nasher. So I went ahead and equipped my Blaze Weapon. Because of the current structure of the Hunting Grounds, the Dire Level Behemoths for certain ones aren't available. These include Stormclaw, Hellion and Nezaga, and maybe some other ones that I'm missing, I don't know.
A lot of time could have been saved at the end here if I was able to just choose which behemoth was on my island. Overall, it probably would have saved about a half hour if I didn't have to requeue islands to find what I was looking for. Probably even more so than a half hour. RNG speed runs are fun. But yeah, here's the dire scrave. Yeah, the worst RNG award probably goes to Heroic Nasher. This is probably my eighth island spawn, and I only got two of them. There are only four non-guaranteed behemoths on this island anyway, so it was already reduced odds. But RNG do be like that though sometimes. But yeah, this is like a typical Nasher strategy, interrupt it or just stagger it, part break it, whatever. Except that didn't happen, so I got it to enrage, and I just needed a part break so it would stop tail stomping and stuff. But oddly enough, it seems like Heroic Nasher doesn't actually have those shockwaves, or just this arena was buggy or something. But yeah, there you go. That was every behemoth in the hunting grounds flawless, except for event behemoths. This is a kind of interesting speedrun, as it does have a really big mix of both skill and RNG. You know, you have to avoid the damage, but you also have to get those particular behemoths to spawn. And sometimes when those particular behemoths spawn, they're just really easy to kill. But yeah, hopefully you learned something, or at least, you know, this serves as a guide to, hey, if you're struggling with a particular behemoth, then this is a strategy you can use to take care of it flawless. Consider dropping a like for me, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I have been Trevor, I go by the Mr. Trails, and I will catch you guys next time.